thousand fold epicenter is um, the union without union. Uh, it's the, the center of nothingness. It's uh, the dimensionless um, everything. It's the 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 moment of space time where space time itself becomes null and void. So um, what could be perceived as death or chaos. Um, basically it's the same thing as the time of no time evermore which was our first record. So it basically we've done the same thing twice but in a different way. Uh, it's done by, a, by an artist who is um, very much into what is known as Segel magic, um, which, to make a long story short, uh, means that this symbol is the band name in, in a, a graphical way. So uh, it's also the focus of the band, uh, like for much in a way that a cross for a Christian would be uh, his point of focus in, in a prayer or in a ceremony, or the, the statue of Maria or the Ganesha statue for a, for a Hindu, or you know, it, could be, it could be anything, the Rosarian. It's, uh, it's uh, something that we use on stage. We, we have it as a banner on, in the back. Uh, the, it's through which we project our energy and we try to have the crowd's energy also projected towards that same uh, point and when charged properly and when uh, the, the ceremony goes as it is supposed to go it becomes a, a gateway. It's, it's strange, uh, the way we worked with the artist was that I gave him the lyrics and the, uh, the, the, the music to the songs that I was writing, the demos basically, and I told him to you know, be inspired by it and make something that for him was a, him. Yeah, was a representation of what he was hearing and reading. Um, so I never edited him or, or gave him any direction. So he came up with symbols and he came up with, uh, with possibilities and with, with, um, with images that, that for me were completely new. Uh, but a lot of them spoke, uh, spoke to me to the... Uh, as um, as completely correct, it was it's very it's a little bit difficult to to explain, but it's like um, trying to get across a certain idea, but never wanting to be too um, concrete about it. So high, uh, l layering it in folds of uh, coding and symbolism, and uh, this person listened to it and immediately was like, okay, this is. And when you seen it, you were like. I was shocked uh, sometimes, I was like, for, because I, I thought that either this man is extremely brilliant, which I have decided that he is, <laughs> or I have, I'm very bad at, uh, at, at, uh, <laughs> at hiding. <laughs> so, uh, uh, no, he's a, he's a yeah, tremendous artist and uh, yeah, we're extremely happy to have been able to work with him on this record. And uh, it's already uh, a horror to think about what we have to do next you know, to, to top this. But. <laughs> It's an interesting challenge, nonetheless. Oh, the, the long and short is basically um, around 2007, after a long time of um, reflection and uh, change in me as a person, uh, going from what I would think as a very negative place towards a better future, uh, I decided to find a way to uh, creatively expel some of the things that I was going through uh, and to channel s the things that I had uh, learned and the things that I was learning uh, through uh, the only medium that I am any good at which is music and, uh, and words and uh, I wrote a couple of songs uh, made a demo uh, together with my sister and uh, from there on slowly things started to snowball out of control and uh, we released a 7-inch, an EP, a full length, another single, and then another full length, then a single, and now we're here.
think this is one of the few examples of a of a of a tour that's not uh, built around one musical concept or about one uh, economical st strategy, but more about uh, having four unique creative entities um, create their own rituals and their own ceremonies in their own way. That's pretty powerful. I think it is, and it has been pretty powerful in the last uh, two weeks already. So, yeah, the people that we are, for better or for worse, like uh, tied to on this tour are mostly uh, the in solitude and. Uh, Watain, uh, as I am playing uh, with Watain as well, uh, as Seth couldn't make it on this tour, and um, with in solitude because uh, we feel, in a way, in a strange way, we feel responsible for them. We uh, we want them to uh, have as good a uh, you know, experience as us, uh, uh, I guess. And financially, this tour is difficult for for all of us, and uh, we are, you know, we've we've in the last. Uh, in the last few two weeks, we've we've really grown to a very close knit um, gang, if you would, or a family, uh, in a, and it's it's a tremendously powerful feeling. And uh, I think everybody really appreciates each other, even though you know some of us don't even like each other or, or would, under other circumstances, probably kick the shit out of each other. But we have a common goal now, and. Uh, and that's something that we all fight for very hard and every day. And uh, everybody has a has a dedication uh, to that. Yeah. The Devil's Blood is a band that really doesn't uh, doesn't like to um, plan too far ahead. So we're we're busy here. This is this is what we're doing now. Yeah, let's concentrate on that. And you know the the options are there, and we're looking at them, and we're weighing them. And if if everything makes sense, then we're gonna do whatever we can. It gives us strength, it drains us, it uh, makes us uh, new each day. But it destroys parts of us as well. It's like sacrificing a little bit of yourself every every ritual and gaining something new, something more. Uh, that's uh, for me personally speaking. And um, I'm of the opinion that by performing these rituals as often as I can, that will be a major step towards f destroying uh, my ego and attaining you know, what could be uh, loosely called enlightenment, I guess. I think it was Stephen Haw Hawkins who at one point posed um, the possibility that a black hole wasn't the end of energy and matter, but the, 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 the creation of a new dimension in which the rules of our dimension are, are, are free. And um, this, you know, this, it's interesting to see uh, some, someone like that come to a conclusion that for me uh, seems logical in a way, because I believe that behind the universe there is chaos Absolutely. and the chaos uh, is trying to overpower and uh, reclaim what is rightfully its. And uh, uh, I believe that what we are doing in a very small way, a very small and a very humble way, and I, I know the same goes for Watain and the same goes for uh, In Solitude as well, we add to this maelstrom, we add to this um, force that is slowly growing and maybe it will take another millennia to grow or a million years or maybe even a few months we never know we can have our hopes and we can pray but one day our prayers will be answered uh, there's a beautiful line in the song waters of ain by watain where eric says do not mistake me for a star though i shine like one at night but behold instead the darkness in between them and i think uh, for people like us it's more like that. We are we are not as much the light as the spaces in between. You know, the the the, the lone the lone ones, the, the 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 wolves, the outcasts, and that's something that we've chosen ourselves. It wasn't necessary. You know, we weren't. Most of us were not even specifically born in that situation, but our souls pushed us there.
Well, I am what I am, and I think um, denying myself any kind of human experience would be tantamount to insanity. Um, I think, if anything, life has taught me that it is important to experience. And it's even important to experience things that from the get-go seem horrible or unacceptable. Uh, in a way, if we want to learn about ourselves, we need to, we need to wallow in the darkness and we need to you know, embrace the, the, the death. And um, if, if, if as a human being you're not able to do that, you're, then you're a slave to begin with. And it will, in the end, it will tie you down and it will stagnate you and it will, uh, it will deny yourself of any spiritual progress. Um, because adhering to the order and the structure of the world is like being frozen in a lake, uh, being perfectly still and, uh, and, and not in touch with anything, but at the same time uh, perfect. And perfection is uninteresting to me. Death is not the end, to quote Bob Dylan. Everything would be conjecture uh, and it would be mere speculation. Um, there is a the things that we might like, there are the things that could quite possibly be, and then there's the truth somewhere in between. So it's 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 hard to uh, to put that into words. I think it's impossible, and I think it's not even interesting to be to be totally honest, because um, you know it will happen, and uh, I have I have faith in the fact that it will go on, uh, but the form it will take and the exact shape it will be. I believe in chaos and chaos has no definite form or shape. So it's, I think it will be all about how powerful my will would be at that moment. It could be as much as a molecule or as much as a planet. So we'll see. I hope to be a, a voice that, that rings true and is true and um, devoid of pretense and filled with furious honesty and uh, the, I don't fear so much as expect that at a certain point my energies will be spent and I hope uh, to be able to have the self-reflection at that point to understand that you have done all these things, you have been tremendously successful in what you are doing, and I'm not talking f in, in, a, in a financial or, or popularity way, but successful internally. Uh, and it's time to stop now, and it's time to go on and to see what, what we're next to conquer, basically. And, um, uh, and, you know, the concept of death is only scary if one believes that eternity is darkness. And if one believes that eternity is fire, then there is possibilities.